Okay, here we go. We get to analyze our first derivative graph and see what's happening to the original function f. So I've drawn a nice little polynomial function. It's not very busy, doesn't have a lot of things happening on it right now. This is my original function f. What can you tell me about it? I hope you can tell me that it's nice and continuous. It's everywhere differentiable. Looks like a cubic function, I would hope you come up with the fact that it's starting low, ending high, has no asymptotes, no points of discontinuity, thus, like I said, everywhere continuous, and no cusps, no holes, no asymptotes, everywhere differentiable. Let's go ahead, I'm going to switch color chalk here, I'm going to go for the, uh, I'm going to go for the green, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the derivative graph of this function f. Um, points on the derivative graph are the, the easiest ones to figure out are the points of um, tangency to the original function f that have zero slopes. So remember that if I want to draw the graph that represents the, the derivative of this graph, then I'm actually going to be graphing or plotting points that represent the slope of the tangent line to this function. So this tangent line right here having a slope of zero at this relative min tells me that this particular x value, I gotta come up here and put a zero, I don't know what the x value is, but I do know that when x is this value right here, the slope of the tangent line on the original function is zero. Good to go. That happens one other spot here. Where is that? Up here. So the slope of the tangent line up here is also zero. So therefore, at that particular x value, I come right down and I make the slope of the tangent line equal to zero. So at these points right here, I'm actually plotting the x-coordinate that sh is shared with the first derivative graph, but for my y-coordinate, I'm plotting the slope of the tangent line of the original function. And that's why this thing coming up is going to be known as f prime. Okay, so let's see something else a little bit here. Somewhere in the middle between this high and this low, I've got some negative slopes here. Let me get my, my uh, tangent line, my handy-dandy ruler here. So as I move off this zero slope of the tangent line, then I come down here, looks like I have a negative slope, but it's not very, very negative. It might be like negative one half or something like that. I'm not quite sure how, how negative it is, but it's, it's a little negative. Let's come down here and, and put a dot down here, a point, which represents a value that's slightly negative at this particular x coordinate. And then I get even more negative, don't I? And even more negative. So maybe here, this is, this is even further down negative than what the other point was. So my tangent line is actually, the slope of the tangent line, excuse me, is actually decreasing as it becomes more and more negative. And down here someplace, right in here, looks like I'm going to hit the, the lowest possible tangent line slope value. Somewhere's in here. And then after that, my slope starts to increase just slightly, just a little bit more and just a little bit more, and a little bit more, until I'm back to zero. As a matter of fact, that slope right there, that's a, that's a negative slope, but it's not very big for a negative slope. So it's, the, it's a, not too much, right around here someplace. So again, let's start right here. We started with a zero tangent line, slope of the tangent line, to a somewhat negative slope of the tangent line to even more negative slope of the tangent line to even more slope, negative slope of the tangent line. Whoops, I'm getting off a little bit. And now I've got to come back up a little bit. And I come back up a little bit more. So as I come back up, I'm, I'm bringing this value back up here. So somehow, and I don't know if these points are, are perfectly drawn or not perfectly drawn, but somehow or another, when you miss your points, you just make them a little bit bigger like that. And you kind of BS your way through it a little bit. So, the slope of the tangent line between this zero slope of the tangent line and that zero the slope of the tangent line, the slope of every single tangent line in the middle is negative. It goes further and further negative, further and further negative, further and further negative until it starts going back up. So this shows that you're getting further and further negative, further and further negative until you start going back up. Still negative, but not quite as much. And then after this slope of the tangent line equaling zero, then I have a positive slope, and a more positive slope, and a more positive slope, and a more positive slope. And the slope of the tangent line simply continues to increase. So the slope of the tangent line goes positive, and it continues to increase. On the other side, right here, I have a positive slope of the tangent line. It's not very 
much positive, but it's maybe like a third or a fourth. And then we have a little bit more positive slope, a little bit more positive slope, a little bit more positive slope, a little bit more, a little bit more. And I can tell that the slope of my tangent lines here are definitely getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So here we go. Slopes of tangent lines getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is known as f prime. And I want to analyze this just a little bit more with you. First off, it certainly looks like a quadratic function. And if you take a cubic function and take its derivative, you definitely get a quadratic function. So that should make sense to you. Somewhere down here, where we have a minimum value on my first derivative graph, has to be where the slopes of the original function are changing from, in this case, decreasing to increasing. So as the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing, somewhere in here, they turn around and they start to increase again and come back up. Slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing means the original function is concave down. Slopes of the tangent lines are increasing means the original function is concave up. That should make sense to you. Okay? But somewhere in the middle, the slopes switch from decreasing to increasing. And therefore, we have what's called an inflection point on the original function f here, which is noted by this minimum value of f prime down here. Alrighty. Um, let's see what else we can talk about. Let me ask you some questions. Where is f increasing? Where is the function f increasing? Well, I can see the function f. It's written in my chalk, my white chalk. Function f is increasing from left to right as it goes up, from negative infinity all the way to whatever point this is. And again, from this low point here all the way up to whatever positive infinity we end up getting over there. Um, let me see. I'm going to call this A. I'm going to call this B. I'm going to call this C. Now let's see if we have enough points to talk about our function f here. Where is f increasing? Negative infinity is going there. Positive infinity is coming over here. So f is increasing from negative infinity all the way to a. And again, from here, which is c, all the way to positive infinity. Now what is it about f prime that allows us to notice this? So now look at f prime. Look at f prime between negative infinity and a, and then again between c and positive infinity. Are you seeing f prime between negative infinity and a, and again between c and positive infinity? f prime is above the x-axis on those intervals. So therefore, f prime is positive. So f will be increasing wherever f prime is positive. I think you already knew that. f is increasing means its derivative is positive, its slope is positive. When you have a positive slope, a function increases. Likewise, where is f decreasing? Well, as long as you've got the first example sitting there, it's pretty easy to flip-flop it. But f itself is decreasing. I want you to look at the function f and show me where it's decreasing. Function f decreases from this relative max all the way down to this relative min. And that is on the interval between a and c. And look at the, look at the um, first derivative graph between a and c and tell me what you notice about it. I hope you notice that the first derivative is definitely below the x-axis there. So that is because the first derivative is less than 0. We know that already, I hope. You know that a decreasing function is indicated when the first derivative or the slope is negative. So that should click with you. A negative slope. Think of a negative slope. A negative slope means that the function itself is going down or the function itself is decreasing. Think about it either way you want. Just make sure you, you can get that correlation back and forth. Where is f? We got increasing, decreasing. Let's go for concave up. Where is f concave up? Well, we're concave down, and then somewhere in here, remember we said we're going to turn around and become concave 
up, and I mark this B. I'd like you to think of this B right here. This X coordinate is B comma F of B as your point of inflection because that's where I mark the minimum value on your first derivative graph. So F is concave up. Concave up from B all the way to positive infinity. From B to positive infinity. Now look at your green graph. Look at the green graph that represents the first derivative function. And imagine from B forward what is true about this first derivative graph from B forward. F prime has to be what? And I hope you're telling me F prime is increasing. Or, you know, I haven't said it like this before, but you could always tell me that the slope of F prime is positive because the slope of something represents its derivative. So if you take the derivative of the first derivative, then you get your second derivative, which of course describes concavity. However, every answer I want you to give me has to deal with F prime. I want to know what is it about the graph of F prime that is allowing us to figure out something about the function F. So where is F concave down? F is concave down here, right? So from negative infinity all the way to B, from negative infinity all the way to B, negative infinity all the way to B, the original function F is concave down. Now I want you to look at that interval on your green graph or on your first derivative function. From negative infinity all the way to B, I'm hoping you can tell me that this green function, this first derivative function is decreasing or that the slope of the green function or of the first derivative function is always negative. I'm going to write because f prime is decreasing. And we can say the slope of f prime is negative if you'd like. But I'd like to stick with increasing and decreasing. This is the mathematical definition of concave up. A function f is concave up on an, on an interval from a to b if f prime is increasing on that interval. And a function f is concave down on an interval from a to b if indeed that the f prime is decreasing on that interval. So those are the mathematical definitions of concave up and concave down, which is why I like to go back to them and resort back to them. Okay. We're going to... Um, Oh, one more question. Where does F have an inflection point? And this is not an interval. This is a location of a point. So this is an X coordinate if I have any at all. So where does F have an inflection point? Does F change from concave up to concave down? or from concave down to concave up, does F indeed change concavity anywhere? And I'm hoping that, yeah, you know that we're concave down, then we're concave up on F, the point in which we switch that concavity I asked you to be considering as, as this B value right here for X. So at X equals B, we have an inflection point on F. Now I want you to look at F prime, and I want you to tell me what is it about F prime at x equals b that tells you you have an inflection point. So bring back the definition of increasing or decreasing. We know that f is concave up when f prime is increasing. We know that f is concave down when f prime is decreasing. So therefore, we're going to have a, an inflection point, which is a change in concavity when f prime switches from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So I'm going to write here because f prime is switching from, and I'm going to write increasing to decreasing, and I'm going to get the arrow going backwards because I don't really have to specify which way it goes, just to make sure that I know it is changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. In this case, concave down to concave up, we're changing from decreasing to increasing, but I'm, I'm taking care of that by putting the arrow backwards as well. So it's okay. Alrighty, I'm good to go.